Hey there, Doc. Dr. Scott Doherty from Cairo Launch coming to you today from Lake Tahoe. Uh, I was over in Sacramento uh, yesterday into this morning working with a doctor over there, and tomorrow morning I got a practice evaluation over in Carson City, Nevada. Tahoe's halfway in the middle. I had an afternoon to spare. What would you do? You hang out in Tahoe, right? Uh, so I'm enjoying this beauty here, but I wanted to talk to you real quick about uh, you know, uh, struggling practice again. Last time I talked to you out in South Bend, Indiana with Touchdown Jesus behind me, uh, I was giving you some uh, some internal and external factors of what to do when your practice is struggling or going down. Um, and I wanted, I got some feedback uh, from other doctors asking for a little bit more detail. So I want to give that to you today. Uh, but this is about the 10th time I've tried to make this video. I'm getting clobbered by wind out here. I wanted you to see all the scenic beauty behind me, uh, but I don't think I'm going to be able to get the video. So I'm going to go hike up in the woods here or something uh, and finish off this video. But when I get back, we're going to be talking about the five things that help you to grow a practice, which are also the five things you need to look at to see if they're what's causing your practice decline. So I'll be right back with you. All right there, Doc. I took a little hike up into the woods here. Uh, not quite as scenic as the lake, but uh, much quieter with the wind, so hopefully I can finish up this video for you. So again, we're talking about the five things that help to grow a practice. Also the five things you need to look at when you're struggling. Before we get started, if you've been following me long enough, you know I, I often talk about uh, practice growth being like an airplane taking off. An airplane needs two things in order to take off. It needs thrust and it needs lift. Uh, the lift is provided by the airplane wings and the design, but you need to put some energy into it. You got to put some energy into the airplane, making it go forward fast enough that the lift takes it off the ground. And your practice is very similar to that. Uh, and the fact that it always needs some energy. It has natural lift. If you put the energy into it, it will take off for you. Uh, but the opposite is true as well. If you stop putting energy into an airplane, the natural tendency of an airplane is to fall down towards the ground. Same thing with your practice. If you stop putting energy into your practice, the natural tendency is for it to drift downward. Uh, and that's something we always have to be aware of. We always have to be putting that energy into our practice to make sure it at least maintains, if not growing, if that's what you're shooting for. But if you stop putting that energy in, natural tendency is to decline. Uh, now, just to finish up that analogy, there's also uh, um, drag on an airplane. We've got to reduce drag. The more drag we can reduce, the better, easier it is for an airplane to take off. Same thing with your practice. I spent a lot of my time in on-site consultations where people hire me to come in and fix their practice, getting rid of drag, getting rid of things that people put into place, which is actually slowing them down, not helping them. That's a whole different factor. Uh, to talk about a practice that is struggling, uh, again, there's five things you need to look at. I tell somebody who's trying to build a practice to new heights, if they're trying to jump to another level, five things you need to look at. One, um, really the essence of patient care. Uh, are you giving the patient what they want? And I know a lot of doctors you know, might go to a seminar and learn uh, how to present these huge treatment plans, uh, which might be necessary, don't get me wrong, but they're presenting them right up front. They're, they're shifting what a patient comes in wanting and what they want to give them. Uh, and my opinion is you should always give them what they want first uh, and then offer what you think they need in the longer term care plan. Uh, and that might turn some people off, but I've just found that to be better for both practice growth as well as patient relationships. So that essence is, is key something you need to look at. Uh, number two would be your uh, ability to provide service, your capacity, especially during your peak demand times of the day. Your heaviest times of the day, you need to look at those things and figure out if maybe, uh, you know, in order to grow a practice, you have to maximize those things. And a lot of guys, a lot of docs do. They, they're in growth mode, they maximize these things, then they get into this comfortable level and they start thinking, well, I can start doing these things for myself. They start getting into uh, developing the practice around themselves as opposed to as being a business. And then they wonder why it declines. So in these, uh, this capacity uh, factor, we need to figure out, you know, did, did somebody, uh, one of your key employees who used to work till six, now she only works till four because she wants to take care of her kids. Uh, and if she left, now you no longer have that capacity between four and six when people want to be there. Uh, did you change your hours completely? Uh, did you go out to a seminar and learn some great new technique, which is fabulous, but it takes you two, three minutes more per patient or 10, 15 more minutes more per patient. So now you're able to see less. Uh, so you're providing you know, better service, but it's affecting your numbers. Uh, and you've got to make that decision. I'm not gonna make that decision for you, but if you're ca calling me asking why the practice is going down and it's obvious that you, you're spending longer with patients, that's, that's an obvious reason why. Uh, so capacity is another thing. Um, prices. 
are your prices too high or too low? Uh, and, and too low is a factor, don't get me wrong, I've seen it happen as well. Uh, and that could be caused by external forces as well. Did insurance change, making more out of pocket for a patient? Did you change? Did you get out of an insurance plan that even though it was terrible, uh, still lost you some patient volume? And again, sometimes that's a good thing, don't get me wrong there either. Uh, sometimes you could lose some patients that you're, you know, Sometimes insurance decreases such amount that you're actually paying the patient to get care from you and those ones you should get rid of. Uh, but the things you need to, to evaluate. And then number four. Number four is your case presentation. Is it too strong or too weak? Uh, so again, I, earlier I talked about the patient essence, you know, people come, what they come in for. Uh, in this case, it, it's less about them and more about you and what you believe. Again, a lot of guys go off to a seminar and learn all this new stuff and, and come in, you know, with these really strong overcoming objections, uh, report of findings. And... Turns out they scare people away. You know, people nod their heads and agree with them, then they run the first chance they get. Obviously, bad for the practice, bad for your reputation. If you change one of those things right before your numbers started going down, that's something you, that's significant and you should look at. Uh, too weak is also a big factor. Uh, I see a lot of docs who, who had a, a nice presentation, a very comfortable presentation. They were doing really well, and then somebody said no to them. Somebody rejected them. Somebody didn't like that. And they spend the rest of their time trying to chase that one patient. Uh, so they, they lower their treatment plan to try to get that person to say yes, but that person's never gonna say yes. Focus on your, your optimum patient. Focus on what they want. Focus on how you wanna run your practice and, and have a really nice middle ground, comfortable uh, presentation for you that, that builds great rapport so that patients will stay forever, but you don't have to get them to, to marry you on the first date type of a thing. Uh, and then the fifth factor uh, that we talk about is just focus. <sighs> I see that all the time. Doctors especially who have had great practices and then they, uh, you know, they have a little decline. Something went wrong externally or internally. Um, divorce, bankruptcy, all kinds of things that can change your mindset. Something could go, you know, car accidents. Um, things that happen to you personally that cause the practice decline, understandably, and they just don't have the focus to get it back up again. They've done it once, they don't want to do it again. Sometimes it's a younger doctor that just really doesn't, you know, they, they kind of know the things they want to do, they've evaluated all that stuff, they know the right things, but they don't have the focus and intensity to put that thrust into their practice and help it to grow. There's one thing I'm sure of in all the evaluations I've done, all the on-site consultations I've done, is that if your practice is declining, it's because of you. It's always because of you, Doc. Uh, even if your your staff embezzled from you, or uh, something terrible went wrong in your in your community or, or um, in your environment, still you. You still have to make the choices. You still have to adapt. You're still responsible for your own practice. And I'm telling you right now, if you're declining, you need to take the opportunity to look at those five factors I just talked about. Find out which one of them maybe you made a change in right before your numbers started to decline and change it back and <laughs> get back to the way you used to be. Get back to, and this isn't, uh, you know, again, this whole series is not so much about taking a practice off. It's about slowing down that stall. It's about turning that around and, and helping to level it off so that you can start making better decisions. So uh, instead of going out there and trying to advertise your way to new patients uh, and then you know keeping them for a very short period of time, making very little money off of them and, and still hurting your business, spending money to, to lose more money, fix the internal problems first. Find which one of those five factors is causing your problem. Fix that. Uh, and I guarantee you're going to get start getting stopping the stall and start getting some momentum upwards. And then again, you can start making some more decisions, but you gotta fix the internal stuff first. Advertising your way out of this is not the way to go. So uh, as I've told you in the last video too, uh, I'm doing a, a course right now uh, that digs a lot deeper into those five factors as well as the external factors, as well as how to get out of these stalls. Um, so somewhere on this page, I'm sure there's a link uh, for you to go check that out uh, and look at uh, uh, the program and the course and you can join and, and, and walk through the program with us. I'm also still doing on my US tour right now. So I'm traveling around the country get, uh, doing practice evaluations for both practices that are in this downward decline, you know, writing up an action plan for them to get out of it. Uh, but if your practice is doing great, you're just watching this video because you like hearing me talk or something uh, and you wanted to practice evaluation, I do those as well. So you don't have to be in a decline for me to help you turn around. Uh, get a lot of calls from guys that are, that are increasing already, but just want to jump to that next level. Uh, I offer my practice evaluations for both of those uh, as I'm doing my U.S. tour. So um, like I said, check out the link on this site somewhere. See when I'm going to be in your area uh, and I'd love to work with you. Talk to you soon.